Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ottawa. Welcome to the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. I know it's a long way for most of you, so thank you for making the trip. FCM's annual conference has become something of a tradition for me. I've now taken the stage for five years in a row, and I always really look forward to coming back. This event gives me a great opportunity to reflect on the work being done in and for Canadian communities. We know that our country is only as strong as the towns and cities we're made of. We're only as strong as our rec centers and social housing or our wastewater systems and public transit. Whether you're living in Vancouver or Val d'Or, the place you call home matters to you and therefore, it matters to me. Federal, provincial, municipal, we all strive to create spaces that are more livable, more welcoming, and more prosperous. That's our job, and we can never forget that we're in this together. We heard you loud and clear when you told us you needed a strong partner in Ottawa, a partner that would listen to you and work with you to improve the lives of Canadians across the country, our government is proud to be that partner. Every day, FCM and its members do incredible work to make our communities better places to live, from helping new Canadians feel at home to encouraging women to get involved in local politics the scope of your impact cannot be overstated. And on that last point, I know that at least a few of your city councils can boast gender equality. Including more women at the table is a something we all share. Last year, I talked about our ambitious plan to invest in infrastructure and give middle-class Canadians the help they need today while preparing for the future. And since then, we've been able to accomplish a lot together. So far, nearly 3,000 infrastructure projects have been approved across the country. These projects were ready to go, and your communities needed them. And on that note, I want to thank my friend Amarjeet Sohi for all his incredible work. From his time as a municipal councillor to his new role as a minister, he has always been a strong advocate for communities, big and small, and the record number of projects approved attests to that. L'une de nos priorités était d'investir dans les systèmes d'eau potable et de traitement des eaux usées pour faire en sorte que chaque communauté canadienne, où qu'elle soit, ait accès à de l'eau potable. Jusqu'à présent, Nous avons levé 18 avis d'ébullition de l'eau à long terme dans les communautés des Premières Nations, ce qui nous rapproche de notre objectif d'assurer que chaque Canadien ait de l'accès à de l'eau potable. Aucun Canadien ne devrait avoir à s'inquiéter de la qualité de l'eau que les membres de leur famille consomment et dans laquelle ils se lavent ou s'amusent. Dans le but d'améliorer la qualité et la sûreté de nos sources d'eau, nous avons mis à niveau et réparé des systèmes d'eau potable et de traitement des eaux usées à travers le pays, y compris dans les petites communautés et les communautés isolées. Par exemple, nous sommes en train de construire un nouveau réservoir à Watson Lake, au Yukon, pour que les familles aient accès à de l'eau potable tout au long de l'année, sans interruption. Et à Lunenburg, en Nouvelle-Écosse, Nous réalisons des mises à niveau plus que nécessaires au système de traitement des eaux usées pour que les enfants puissent bénéficier d'eau propre et ce pour des générations à venir. It's not necessarily sexy, but these projects are the backbone of strong and growing communities. We've also made historic investments in public transit. For a decade, municipalities and provinces didn't have the support they needed 
to keep up with the rapid pace of growth. You are leading your communities through big changes. Some of our big cities have had their populations double and their boundaries expand. Towns now need more elaborate bus networks to navigate their streets effectively and trains that connect them to city centers. There's no doubt that the need for better, more efficient public transit is shared amongst communities big and small. Canadians need transit to get them to work in time for, uh, it, to work in time and from the morning and home for dinner at night. We knew that investing in the things we needed, both for right now and for the future, we would create jobs, strengthen our communities, and grow our middle class. But in order to have a real impact on the lives of real people, we needed your help. We turned to you, the experts, to identify the projects your communities needed most, and we got to work. For the people of Sudbury, this means speeding up the bus fleet rebuild progress and, and providing better access to the Kingsway. For commuters in Regina, this means enhancing safety and security on buses and replacing old buses with newer ones. And for students living in Gatineau across the river, it means expanding the Rapibus system so they can get to their classes on time right here in Ottawa. These investments made in Phase 1 are providing much-needed improvements to our existing networks. Improvements that make our cities and towns safer, more efficient and more enjoyable places to live. Our second budget is to rely on the progress realized up to present to continue this work. Nous avons annoncé de nouveaux investissements historiques en vue d'améliorer la façon dont les Canadiens travaillent, vivent et s'amusent. Nous savons que chaque communauté a des besoins différents, donc nous avons élaboré un plan qui reflète cette réalité. Dans le cadre du budget 2017, nous nous sommes engagés à verser 2 milliards de dollars supplémentaires sur 11 ans aux communautés rurales et nordiques pour répondre aux besoins particuliers des familles qui vivent dans des régions éloignées. Par exemple, ces fonds pourraient être utilisés pour garantir l'accès aux services d'Internet haute vitesse ou encore pour aider certaines communautés à réduire leur dépendance au diesel. Pour vous aider à réaliser vos priorités, et atteindre les cibles que vous avez fixées pour vos communautés, nous nous sommes aussi engagés à verser un financement prévisible et réservé aux municipalités. Nous avons également reconnu le fait que l'ancien mode de partage des coûts entre les gouvernements municipaux et provinciaux et le gouvernement fédéral ne fonctionnait pas toujours. Nous avons donc augmenté notre part jusqu'à concurrence de 40 % pour les projets de construction et de développement du transport en commun et de 50 % en ce qui concerne les projets d'amélioration des systèmes existants. And by working with yeah, you can applaud that one. That was a good one. I know you like that one. And by working with you and our provincial partners we concluded some of the most ambitious investments to date in public transit infrastructure. In March, I was in Etobicoke to announce that our government would be investing more than $1.8 billion in the GO Regional Express Rail Network. The GO Network, the GO Network is one of the largest transit projects a government has ever invested in, but it does more than just add new trains and expand the existing system. It creates good, well-paying jobs for middle-class Canadians. It connects the people who live in different parts of the GTA to each other. It makes sure that families can enjoy everything their communities have to offer, and with fewer cars on the road, it means cleaner air and greener communities. Across the country, we also heard from too many Canadians who struggle to find a safe and affordable place to live. Seniors who are forced out of their homes because they can no longer afford to pay rent. Young professionals who work long hours 
but still have to postpone buying their first home. Women and kids who fled violence at home and have no safe place to turn. This is the heartbreaking reality for far too many Canadians. Our cities and towns are the front lines of the very real housing challenges facing millions of Canadians. You told us that you needed more resources and more support, that you need a serious federal partner here for the long haul. And that's why we decided, decided to take action in Budget 2017. Over the next 11 years, the federal government will invest $11.2 billion to build and repair more affordable homes for people in need. Of that, $5 billion will be dedicated to the creation of a new national housing fund, which will prioritize projects that will have the greatest impact on communities. Notre objectif consiste à réduire de 50% le nombre de gens qui vivent dans la rue et les aider à se remettre sur pied. Avec la nouvelle stratégie de, en matière de logement, nous sommes en voie d'atteindre cet objectif. Pour la première fois, nous mettons en place un cadre qui permettra non seulement de résoudre les problèmes de logement actuels, mais de lutter contre l'insécurité en matière de logement et contrer l'itinérance pour les générations à venir. La nouvelle stratégie en matière de logement n'est que l'une des mesures que prend notre gouvernement pour aider davantage ceux qui sont dans le besoin. Dans les dernières années, le nombre de personnes qui consomment des opioïdes a connu une hausse fulgurante et les conséquences sont dévastatrices. Des familles déchirées, des êtres chers qui nous quittent trop tôt, l'épidémie d'opioïdes est un problème sur lequel nous ne pouvons pas fermer les yeux. Et ces problèmes de dépendance touchent tout le monde. Workers who are prescribed medication for back pain struggle with addiction as their prescriptions run out. Teenagers at a party who make a mistake with deadly consequences. Moms, dads, friends, and classmates whose lives are torn apart by tragedy. The opioid epidemic has touched the lives of countless Canadians in one way or another. In our latest budget, we committed additional funding to keep these harmful drugs out of the, our kids' hands and help those struggling with addiction. This builds on a number of important steps we've taken over the last year to give communities, service providers, and first responders the tools they need. As governments, we know there's more to do. We will not rest until we turn the tide. We must come together to address this crisis, and that's why we're working with our provincial, territorial, and municipal partners to find lasting solutions. And on that last point, I'd like to specifically thank Mayor Robertson as well as Mayor Iveson and the Big City Mayor's Caucus for their incredible, compassionate, determined leadership on this issue. We're listening and we're here to work with you. Overall, we've built a plan that not only provides immediate fixes for the short term, but that also creates long-term solutions to some of the greatest challenges facing Canadians and their families. L'année dernière, la ville de Fort McMurray a été ravagée par des feux de forêt et cette année, des familles du Québec, de l'Ontario, de la Colombie-Britannique et des provinces de l'Atlantique ont été durement touchées par des inondations sans précédent. Nos communautés continueront à faire face à de nouvelles épreuves en raison des changements climatiques. Nous le savons. Nous devons donc nous préparer et poursuivre la transition vers une économie axée sur l'énergie propre. Dans le cadre de notre dernier budget, nous avons annoncé que 2 milliards de dollars seraient investis dans la mise sur pied d'un fonds d'atténuation et d'adaptation en matière de catastrophe. Au cours des derniers mois, 
Nous avons constaté les conséquences dévastatrices que des conditions météorologiques extrêmes peuvent avoir sur des familles, des commerçants et leurs communautés. Ces fonds serviront à bâtir des digues et d'autres infrastructures pour prévenir des dommages causés aux résidences, aux écoles et au commerce et pour aider à assurer la protection de nos communautés. Depuis longtemps, les villes sont à l'avant-garde des mesures visant à contrer les changements climatiques, alors je tiens à vous remercier. Vous êtes nos partenaires dans ce qui constitue le plus grand défi de notre génération. While we deliver for middle-class families and their communities today, we need to keep an eye focused on the future. That's why we started to lay the groundwork for other innovations in our ambitious plan to build a greener, smarter, better towns and cities. The cities and towns of the future start with transforming the way infrastructure is planned, developed, and built. We've recently announced the creation of the new Canada Infrastructure Bank, which will get our communities growing now, not 10 years from now. The bank will be responsible for attracting capital from the private sector that will in turn be invested in transformative projects. Once operational, the bank will be yet another tool to move new projects forward, projects that will create more jobs, make our communities more inclusive, and grow the economy. But I want to be very clear that this will be an optional tool. Over 90% of our long-term plan will be delivered through grants. But the bank is a way for us to leverage private capital and help our dollars go even further. Because we know that the budgets are serrés and that there is not a lot of margin of maneuver to do things differently. You often choose between answering the needs of immediate citizens and putting in practice your ideas innovative and creative. We understand. Et on veut aider. Aujourd'hui, le, le gouvernement fédéral présente le défi des villes intelligentes, qui vous donnera une plateforme pour rêver en grand, innover et mettre de l'avant des idées audacieuses. Today, the federal government is introducing the Smart Cities Challenge to give you a platform to dream big, innovate and implement bold ideas. Nous invitons les communautés de partout au Canada à élaborer un plan ambitieux visant à améliorer la qualité de vie de leurs citoyens et ainsi contribuer à bâtir l'avenir du Canada. Les villes de l'avenir seront intelligentes. Est-ce que ça se traduira par de la fibre optique entre chaque résidence et chaque commerce? Des routes et des feux de circulation intelligents ou encore des réseaux de distribution d'énergie dé décentralisés qui fonctionnent dans les deux sens, ou tout ça ensemble, ou d'autres choses entièrement. À vous de décider et de démontrer. We're inviting communities across Canada to develop ambitious plans to improve the lives of their residents and help us build Canada's future. Working with local businesses, innovators and entrepreneurs, communities, will be able to submit their plan for innovation and the most promising designs will receive funding to bring those ideas to life. We will launch three separate editions of the Smart Cities Challenge with the first edition beginning this year. Each time, five prizes will be awarded. The best project will win $50 million. Two smaller communities with big ideas will receive $10 million, and one smaller or rural or remote community will win $5 million. An additional $5 million will also be given to a project for an Indigenous community. We will... We'll officially launch this program this fall, but Minister Sohi and his team will be working with key partners this summer to ensure that you have everything you need to start dreaming big right now. We hope that this competition of ideas will encourage us all to think outside the box. 
There's serious money at stake, sure. But I know this room. The bragging rights will be just as motivating. <laughs> so I have no doubt that it will push you to take your ideas to the next level and imagine the best possible solutions for the people you so proudly represent. We know that to build the communities of tomorrow, collaboration across all levels of government is essential. The Smart Cities Challenge and the Infrastructure Bank are just some examples of what we have in store. But while we're getting excited about the future and the new opportunities that it'll bring, we can't forget that for many of our citizens, change brings anxiety. It creates uncertainty about what the future holds. So while we're imagining the cities of tomorrow, our government is also making sure that Canadians have access to good middle-class jobs today, that our kids have even better opportunities than we did, that we can all grow old in the communities that we built. My friends, we can all be very proud of what we've been able to accomplish together and even more excited about what lies ahead. Thank you for your partnership and for all that you do for Canadians and their families. Every day we are building stronger, more inclusive communities where every Canadian can live, work and succeed. Communities that our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy for generations to come because of the collective leadership in this room today. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. Thank you very, very much.